Refugees. This word, this term has dominated my life. 1.2 million people who risked their lives, who came to us with a message, with a very, very strong message, with many messages. 1.2 million people, roughly, over the last year. 7,000 people dead in the Mediterranean, at least. Thousands enslaved, trying to come to us, but they dared and they came. And there's one very strong message there, and saying, hello, we are out there, and you haven't thought of who we are, what we need, how we live, and what the world is all about these days. We had noticed them. We had brought them back from our colonies. We had brought people from abroad as tourists, as migrants, when we needed them. But suddenly, they were coming. Suddenly, it was their choice. Suddenly, it was them who came to us. And now, what we are learning is extraordinary. First of all, we are learning that our societies are not as inclusive, as inclusive as we had hoped, as we had thought we were. We are suddenly discovering that amongst us are many people who are not part of what we could call a modern European society. They have been left behind. We have suddenly discovered we have not been doing work with our own people, with the people who have been here, for so long. They have been left behind and suddenly running after populist parties, strange ideas, regretting the past, the dark past of Europe. We are discovering that the European peace project has been replaced by European economic project. We have been forgetting about why we created the European Union and that is actually to create peace it's the longest peace period in Europe. Nobody talks about these anymore, these facts. Aid, the aid system is not broke. The aid system is broken. The aid system hasn't evolved. The aid system is insufficient. It doesn't respond to what poor people in the world deserve. And let me give you some figures here. Figures which are shocking. The entire humanitarian aid budget, that's what we talk about when we talk about earthquakes, floods, refugee movements because of war, displacement. They receive a meager $20 billion a year. That is what the world produces in terms of money to help starving people, people who need to survive who need survival aid, 20 billion US dollars. About 200, 250 billion are spent on development aid, the famous development aid, development cooperation. Just compare that to the amounts which are currently being spent on real estate projects somewhere, um, on big investment funds which are spending money so we realize that that pittance we're returning is not enough. But we also have learned that aid, in its conception of aid, for about three billion people out there being close to the poverty line or below the poverty line, is the wrong concept. Aid is a very arrogant concept of giving, of charity, of giving to somebody who doesn't have it. We're still doing aid today as we were doing that in 1945, 1946, after the Second World War. We're dropping food packages to people. We let people queue up to get something. Now looking at this room, enjoy your meal. Really enjoy your meal. You are about, I would say, 250 people as we speak, maybe 200. If I look at you as an aid worker, I multiply you by 2,100 kilocalories. That is what you're entitled to receive when you are in trouble. 
If, God forbid, you become a refugee tomorrow, if you become a displaced person tomorrow, you get 2,100 kilocalories from somebody like me. That's what aid means. I will look at you and I will divide you by five. That gives me the number of tents you're entitled to receive. So, here in this room, maybe 50 tents. Please share, be happy. Because you're surviving, you have shelter. I multiply you by 18 liters of clean water. That's what you're entitled to receive every day from the aid system when you're in trouble. And I also ask you to share one toilet with 49 other people. So five toilets for you. Maybe because they're women and men, we will be gender sensitive and we will have um, three of each. That is what we call humanitarian standards. That's what we're supposed to supply to people out there. But, and then comes something which you might, may find s strange for somebody who has worked for 25 years with primarily displaced people and refugees. I have come increasingly to the conclusion that we're getting something very wrong here. I recommend to everyone to spend some time on reading the basic human rights, the Universal uh, Human Rights Declaration again. I didn't do it for many years, I did it, and I'm discovered, well, there is something which is the right to work, the right to leisure, the right to water, the right, many, many rights, which, and I mentioned that figure already, about three billion people in the world don't have. So what do we do with them? A Zatari refugee camp was what many journalists, what the refugees, what the aid workers called the hellhole of all camps. Something had happened there which we didn't understand because for once assistance was right. 2,100 kilocalories, the tents were there from the first day in, when the camp was established in 2012. Water was there despite the fact that Jordan has no water. So the basic standards were fulfilled. And yet every day there were demonstrations, stone throwing, we, the aid workers, we, the aid system, UNHCR, the NGOs, everybody out there trying to provide with a very good will assistance to 100,000 people, we had not understood what they needed and where they were coming from. What we did was something very simple. And I think that's also what is missing. And I work a lot currently with a number of uh, European governments on the way of how they receive asylum seekers in the famous asylum centers. Talk to the people. Talk to each other. Don't see yourself only as a service provider, as keeping people alive, being that uh, being the, the ultimate goal of, of your working day. So what we did in Al-Zatari camp was establish dialogue. Move around, have coffee, talk to people. And suddenly we discovered that people were dominated by that mafia. We discovered that they were dominated by also anger against the international community. We discovered that they didn't like the fact to be assisted and to receive charity. And that's when I changed my hat. I took my hat, my UNHCR cap away, and I put on the hat of a mayor. So my nickname became the mayor. Since April uh, 2014, there has not been one major demonstration in this camp. All that a result of looking at refugees, not as refugees anymore, but looking at people, human beings, living in a space which they want to develop, they want to be in charge. The organization of the future is working with local, small initiatives, recognizing that there are capacities within all the people that they are desiring and they're capable of taking business in their own hands, initiatives in their own hands, all but their luck is access 